helping uh, by doing that. Hey, you know, most of us who are watching this video right now, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came into the world to rescue us from our sins, to put us back in relationship with God. And that is awesome. But you know, if you're sitting here right now and you're watching this video and you don't believe that, I got to be honest with you, I'm probably more excited that you're checking this out. Because what we want to do, our whole reason for doing what we do, is to help you figure out who Jesus is, to help you discover the truth about Jesus. And we as a staff, as a team, really as a whole church, are working hard to help people discover the truth about Jesus and to help them be the church, to be family with Jesus. And not only do we want to help all of you, but we also want to help your children. And so if we have your contact information, you've already received an email from us that gives you resources to do children's ministry right there in your house with your children. How awesome is that? And if we don't have your contact information and you still want those resources, you can look at the comments there on this video and you will see a link giving you resources to do children's ministry with your kids right there in your house. Hey, I need to tell you that we still need your support to continue the work that God is doing here at Islands. So if you want to support the work that's going on here, you can give online or you can text ICC Gives to 77977. You could do that right now. We appreciate anyone who gives anything to the work that God is doing here at Islands. You know, we gather uh, to worship Jesus. We sing to Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be really forthright and direct with you. We don't worship Jesus and sing to Jesus because he makes our lives better. And don't get me wrong, we do believe Jesus makes our lives better, but that's not why we worship him. That's not why we sing to him. The reason we sing and worship Jesus is because we believe he is the truth. He said of himself, I am the truth. We believe that Jesus is the ultimate reality, that he shows us our purpose in life, that he connects us to God our Father, our Creator, and that he makes us a family. He makes us the church. And so we are worshiping and singing to him today. I want to ask you, will you please listen for him? Will you look for him? And will you let him show you who he really is? Let's sing this together right now.
think these next words, man, they're so timely right now. Let's sing them loud. Come on. is an open door. Your presence is an open door. I want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never So the words in that song, that I know a breakthrough's coming, and by faith I see a miracle. For me right now, that is, that's like, that's hope, right? That's everything we're looking at right now, and we see the news, and we see so many things online that are pointing to just, honestly, it's sadness. The world is struggling. There's not a single place that, that hasn't been touched. And I think we're all really feeling the weight of that a lot. Sometimes all of us all the time. And there are these moments that we're reaching for. At least I, I feel like this is what's happening. They were reaching for these times and these moments where, where it just doesn't, it, it doesn't exist anymore. You know, these times when we're playing with our kids in the yard or we're FaceTiming friends or we're, we're getting to see somebody's face and just laugh and smile. It's these brief periods of time where this stuff just doesn't exist and it feels like normal. And I, I think when we look at hope and we say, God, I know a breakthrough's coming. I know that you're going to do a miracle. I know this is going to end. It just takes a lot of trust. It takes a lot of trust and faith in what God can really do. And this morning, these songs are meant to help. They're meant to give you those moments where nothing else exists but you and Jesus. Well, let's continue to sing and praise and worship him this morning. I 
couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe.
Hey, you know, whenever uh, it comes to becoming a Christian or coming to believe in Jesus, there seems to be basically two stories. You know, the first story I'm the most uh, you know, familiar with because it's my story and I'm from the South. You know, uh, one story of becoming a Christian is you grew up in a Christian home. You grew up in a family that went to church and through that process, you came to understand the truth about Jesus and you surrendered your life to Jesus because you knew him or came to know him through your family. But the other story that is often true of people who become Christians is completely different. And I am way more intrigued with it because it's different from my story. It's the story of a person who later in life becomes a Christian. They have this radical realization that Jesus is true and it completely transforms their lives. And maybe they did grow up in church some and maybe they didn't. But for whatever reason, somewhere along the line, they are convinced that Jesus is real and everything changes for them. And actually, I find that oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes those people go in big when it comes to their faith with Jesus. You know, the story we've been looking at over the past few weeks from John chapter 9 is a story about a man who was born blind that Jesus healed, and that he also had this radical realization that Jesus was more than just someone who healed him. He came to understand that Jesus was bigger than he first thought, and it totally changed his life. He actually abandoned everything he had ever known. He left behind all of his traditions, all of his values, all of his culture because of what he learned to be true about Jesus. Now, if you remember the story, it's about uh, a man who was born blind and healed, and the Pharisees did not like that at all. They were not interested in what the truth was about Jesus, right? And so if you look at that story, the Pharisees are way more interested in finding out uh, what, what, what happened, how is this not aligning with our belief system. They wanted to be proven right. And actually, it was the man who was more open to the truth of who Jesus was. He was actually really interested in finding out who Jesus was. On one occasion, they basically are trying to convince this man as they interrogate him to just admit that Jesus is a bad person. And the man is like, hey, I can't comment on that. All I can say is I once was blind and now I see. And God doesn't listen to sinners and he listens to this man. He must be from God. Now, there was no way for this guy to actually know if that were true or not. But here's the thing about the man compared to the Pharisees. The man was open to the possibility that there was more to Jesus. He was open to the possibility about the truth of Jesus. The Pharisees were not. They were completely closed down. They were completely done. They had already decided that Jesus couldn't be the Son of God. But this man was open. And actually, that openness is what's required of each of us if we're ever going to figure out the truth about who Jesus is. So if you're confused about Jesus, aren't sure what you believe about Jesus, the very first step is to be open to the possibility that there may be more about Jesus than you know. That openness paves the way for us to find out the truth about Jesus. And so what we're going to learn about this man today is that not only were his physical eyes open, but his spiritual eyes were opened as well by Jesus. So let's look at this in John chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. This is the rest of the story. <clears throat> Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And that was the Pharisees. They were mad at the man. They didn't like the man, so they kind of excommunicated. They threw him out of the community, all right? And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe and he worshiped him. Now, if you go back to verse 35 there, the first thing I want, to see, I want you to see this morning is that Jesus went and found the man. The man was thrown out, his life was turned upside down, and Jesus went and found him. Jesus went looking for him. So Jesus is walking around the town trying to find this man who he had healed. Now, I think that makes perfect sense because if it's true about Jesus, that Jesus loves us, that he came to the earth to die for us, to put us back in a relationship with God, then it would make sense, it would make total sense that he would want to help us figure out the truth about him, that he's interested in you and he's interested in walking along with you to help you understand the truth of who he is. And so that's what he does. He goes to this man and he finds him and he helps him. In the middle of this man's life right now is a lot of emotional upheaval. I mean, not only had he received his sight, which is a huge deal, 
big, exciting time. But the authorities of his town, they were not happy about this. They were terrorizing him, and they were terrorizing his parents. His life was in a total turmoil. And in the middle of that turmoil, Jesus comes into his story. And I think that's true for every one of us. I mean, I think right now many of us are facing emotional turmoil. We have lots of challenges. We have a lot going on in our own lives, trying to figure out our finances, trying to figure out schooling our children, just uh, trying to figure out how to take care of our our older parents. Like there's a lot happening in our emotions right now. And I think that when we're going through emotional challenges and emotional turmoil, I think we are more open to truth that we had not previously considered. We are more open to truth that we had not previously considered. And I think just like Jesus came to this man in the middle of all his turmoil, I think Jesus is coming to each of you. I think Jesus is right there near each of you, right outside the door of your heart. And he is wanting to help you understand the truth of who he is. The question is, is are you like the man? Are you open to the truth of who Jesus is? Now, when Jesus finds the man, he has a question for him. This is the question that Jesus asked him. He says, do you believe in the Son of Man? Now, this is the most important question that any of us can answer. Jesus understands that the most important matter for every single human being is to decide what they believe about Jesus. And so Jesus says, hey, do you believe in the Son of Man? Now, the term Son of Man, like you're like, whoa, what does that even mean? Okay, so the Jews believed that was a title that was applied to God's Savior, all right? The man who would come to represent God and to save the world and put it back in relationship with God. This is what the Jews believed, that he would be God's representative on earth. And so when Jesus uses this this term, do you believe in the Son of Man, what he is saying to the man born blind is, hey, do you believe that God has sent a Savior, that God has sent someone to represent him on earth? Do you believe that God has sent a Savior to bring man back to him? Now, I want you to notice the man remains open to this most important matter. Look at the next verse, verse 36. The man says, who is he, sir? Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Like, who is he? Like, hey, I'm open. If you just tell me who it is, I want to know who this is. And Jesus responds to him, and he says, basically, hey, the one you're talking to right now, I am he. Like, Jesus just unfolds the truth for him right there in front of him. He convinces him with his own words that he is the Son of Man. You see, Jesus uh, is the one who convinced the man born blind that he was the Son of Man by telling him that he was actually God's son, that he was sent to the world to save the world and put every one of us back in relationship with God. And that's, that's something that I, I just need you to hear me say today, is that only Jesus can convince you about who Jesus is. Only Jesus can show you who he really is. I can't convince you. Your neighbor can't convince you. Your mama can't convince you. No one can convince you as to who Jesus is except for Jesus. And this man's openness is what made it possible for Jesus to convince him. I remember I did something one Sunday in a worship service. I still, to this day, can't believe I did this. It was back in the day when we used to meet in the room. You guys remember those days? And so there was a whole crowd of people in the room, and I was preaching, and near the end of the message, I saw uh, someone in our church who had only been a Christian for like a year, and he was like 24 years old, 25 years old, and he was sitting on the third row. I remember it so well. And at the end of the message, it was a very similar message to this. Uh, I just said to him, hey, man, will you come up here for a second? We didn't talk about this beforehand. We didn't plan this. We didn't rehearse it. I don't know what I was thinking. I would never do this now. But he stood up, and he came to the front of the room, and I just looked at him, and I said, hey, you've been a Christian about a year, right? And he shook his head. I said, who convinced you that Jesus was the Son of God? And without missing a beat, this guy goes, he did. And I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't have written that better, right? Because this guy had become a Christian. His life had been completely turned around, radically changed by this realization that Jesus was the Son of God. But it was no person who convinced him, no man or no woman. It was Jesus himself that convinced him that Jesus was real. But it was this, it was this openness of both my friend who became a Christian, the openness of the man born blind, and the openness of all of us, the openness of you. When you're open, Jesus can come into your life and convince you that he is real. Now, once the man's convinced, he responds. 
he responds to this realization that Jesus is the Son of God. Look at this next verse here about how the man responds. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. That's important, right? He says, Lord, I believe. I believe what you've shown me to be true. I'm putting my faith in you. And look at this next section. And he worshiped him. What? Right? That scene right there always kind of makes me, I try to imagine it because when I'm reading the Bible, I try to imagine stuff that's happening. And I try to imagine this scene. And it's like, if you think about this for a moment, there's this guy who's worshiping another man. Like, that's weird, right? Like, we kind of imagine this and go, no, 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 wouldn't do that. But we think that if it's weird for us, you need to remember that it was weird for this guy. This guy who was born blind. He was a Jew. He knew the Jewish law. He knew that God said, don't ever bow down to an image of me because there is no image of me. Like he knew that that God was a formless being. But here is a man saying, I am God's son sent to earth to save the world. And he bows down to him. Well, what would cause a, a good Jewish man to do that, to radically leave his worldview behind? Well, what would cause him to do that is a realization, a convincing by Jesus that Jesus was who he said he was. Jesus convinced him that he was the Son of God, and he responded by saying, I believe, and then he worshiped him. Now, here's the thing. It's crazy because it makes total sense for the man that day. That when he sees who Jesus is, when he comes to understand who Jesus is, it makes total sense for him to say, Jesus, I worship you. And all worship means is I am ascribing to you. I'm telling you that you are worth my very life. I am loyal to you. I'm surrendering to you. I am your servant. I'm giving you everything. And for the man that day, once he was convinced, it made perfect sense to do that. You see, once we see Jesus and once we realize who he really is and he convinces us, not because we uh, heard somebody make an argument, not because our parents told us it was true, once we see him, we are convinced by him, it makes sense then to say, you know what? You are real. You can have my whole life. I'm surrendering and giving everything to you completely. And you know, That's what the church is. The church is simply people who've surrendered their lives to Jesus completely. People who've seen Jesus, who've had an interaction with Jesus, who know him to be real and true, and know him to be the truth, and who have said, oh, Jesus is real, and I'm giving him my life. That's that's what the church is. The church is simply people who've surrendered to Jesus. And for so long, we've been confused about what the church is. You know, and I think that one of the things that God is doing in this time when none of us can meet uh, at our church buildings around the world, I think God is raising up a new understanding of what the church is. That the church is people who've said, Jesus, you have my life. I'm surrendered to you every day, always, every time. You are in charge of me. I am your servant. You are king. You are savior. You are Lord. I'm surrendered. That is what the church is. And I think God is is reprogramming our hearts, if you will, to know that we live every single day being the church, that we're not people who go to a church. We are people surrendered to Jesus who are the church. And that's what the church is. It's simply people who've met Jesus, convinced he was real by him, and surrendered to him. But what about you? Where are you today? For you, is, is, it, is the science out on Jesus? Have you decided, no, nah, this is legend, this is myth, none of this is true? Have you just already closed the book? Are you like the Pharisees? Are you just done with it? Or are you still open? In the middle of all this emotional upheaval, are you open to the possibility that maybe there's more to Jesus? Maybe there's more than you thought of? You see, I'm convinced that in the middle of all this that's going on in our world, that Jesus is standing outside of the door of your heart right now. That right now Jesus is saying, hey, will you just let me in? That right now Jesus is saying, hey, can we just talk for a minute? That right now Jesus is saying, if you'll give me a couple minutes, I'll be able to convince you. I think Jesus is right outside the door of your heart right now. But are you open? Like that's really the question. Are you open to the possibility that you might be wrong and that Jesus might be real? I hope that you are. 
And for those of you who are watching this video and you're like, I love Jesus, I follow Jesus, let me say this very directly and clearly. That if we are not totally surrendered to Jesus, if we have not said, Jesus, you have my life, whether I live or die, no matter what happens to me, I am yours to do with me as you please. If we've not done that, if we've not surrendered to him, then we've not met him. If you've not said, Jesus, I give you everything, then you haven't met him. You may believe some facts about him. You may grow up in a home that taught you some information about him. You may have a cultural understanding and a religious view of Jesus. But if you're not saying, whatever happens to me, Jesus, whatever happens to my family, whatever happens to my children, whatever happens to my parents, whatever happens in this world, whatever happens, whatever happens, Jesus, I am yours because you are God's Savior and you're my Savior. If you're not saying that, you haven't met him. You just know some stuff about him. So are you open? Are you open to the truth that Jesus is God's son sent to put you back in relationship with God? And I want to give you just a short prayer to pray right here, one sentence. If you're willing to be open today, just say this. Jesus, I'm open to the truth of who you are. Would you just pray that prayer? Jesus, I'm open to the truth of who you are. I got to tell you, I think if you pray that with genuineness and you genuinely ask Jesus to show you who he is, I believe with all of my heart that he will. And you will have a radical realization as well that Jesus loves you and that he's always loved you. So today... All of us need to figure this out, no matter your background, no matter where you come from, no matter whether you grew up in church or didn't grow up in church, new to, new to Christianity, been around it your whole life. We all need to figure this out. Who is Jesus? Are you open? Father, thank you for this opportunity to, to think about Jesus, to look at Jesus, to consider Jesus. We pray that all of our hearts are open. We pray that we might just be like the man born blind and realize that, that if we're just open to the truth of who your son is, that you will find us. You will hunt us down and you will show us your beauty because <laughs> you love us. You love us. You are for us. You will always come after us. And Jesus, you are relentless. Please give us open hearts to the truth of who you are. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, we're going to sing one final song. If we can pray for you, send us a direct message. If you're one of those people who aren't sure what you believe about Jesus, hey, that's great. Would you just send us a message or make a comment? Let us know how we can help you in your spiritual journey, your faith journey of finding the truth about Jesus. If we can pray for you, if we can pray for someone you love, make a comment as we sing this song together right now. Caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave I'm not here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry when I've gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I sang another song and take me back to where we started. I 
Thank you so much for being a part of this today. Would you please like and share this video? You never really know who you'll be helping, who will stumble across this video and hear the truth that Jesus loves them. So will you help us by doing that? Hey, you know, right now things are hard and we know life is hard for many of you. And here at Islands, we have care systems set up to help you. And so if there's something going on in your life, whether it be financial, emotional, mental, if you just need someone to talk to about your anxiety or your stress, we have systems set up for that. You can email us, care at islandschristian.org, care at islandschristian.org. We just want to help you. Don't forget, we have other opportunities for you to stay connected this week, so be sure to take advantage of those. It takes a lot of digital and electronic connection to make up for the fact that we cannot be together in person. So don't miss an opportunity to gather with the church through these electronic ways. Hey guys, next week is Easter. Isn't that amazing? Like next week is Easter and no no one in uh, 2,000 years could have ever imagined that we would be celebrating Easter online, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ next week online. I want you to prepare yourself for that, to prepare yourself that Jesus resurrected from the grave to celebrate that. And we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear because of that truth. And also, I want you to think about who you're going to message or text today and invite to be a part of our Easter gathering online next week. Send them a text, send them an email, and say, hey, I want you to watch this next week. Invite like crazy, because people are going to be looking for ways to engage with worship next week. Hey, we love you all. Thank you for being a part of this day. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful day.